My name is John Pierre, and I'm a nutrition and fitness lecturer. And I've been teaching for over 25 years, and this is Chef Marina, and she's been about 20 years or so. So together we have quite a lot of experience. Predominantly, what I do mainly is I'm working with people on improving their diet and their fitness regimens. So I work with the FBI, I work with US Marshals, I work with a lot of high-speed military people. But then I work with a lot of clients that come to me that are 300 plus pounds. So people that are very heavy, that have had strokes, they have diabetes, they have heart disease. But then, my, believe it or not, my specialty is in geriatrics, where I have 20 years enhancing cognitive functioning. So that's where I've spent most of my time, is with seniors with neurological issues, and we're dealing with Alzheimer's and so forth, Parkinson's. So what we've done today is we've put together a 40-minute lecture, which really would take about five days to, to give you all the information. We're going to make it really quick. We have some easy, quick recipes. And we only have 40 minutes, so we're just going to kind of try to brush over things. I mean, there's a lot of things we'd like to get into. It'd be nice to get into all the technicalities, but we don't have the time. So feel free if there's a, a really pushing question, go ahead and ask it, and we'll do our best to answer it, OK? Well, what, one of the biggest challenges that we're seeing today in America is in our diet today in America, we're seeing about 62% of our diet okay, is processed foods. Now, the challenge with that is when you take a whole grain and you process it, let's say, for instance, it's a piece of whole wheat, right? This would be great if we could grind this up and, and eat it and turn it into a bread or a pasta or whatever, but the food manufacturers, what they do is they strip off this outer labor, which is the bran. This layer is the bran, and this is fiber. Does anyone know what fiber is for? Yeah, fiber helps eliminate. So basically, it, it, there's different types of fibers, soluble and insoluble. They bring down blood sugar. They bring down cholesterol. But the key thing, which I really want to address here today, which is important, is the more fiber that you have in your diet, the less chance you have of toxic buildup. Remember when we had things like uh, PCB or mercury? These are problems. When you get into mercury, this is a neurological poison. This gets in the body, and it's very hard to get rid of. So if you're eating foods that have a lot of mercury in them, like fish, then we run into a problem. So we don't want that to sit in your intestinal tract, leaching mercury into the system. So the food manufacturers so kindly for us remove that fiber and they throw it out. Then this next layer is called the germ or the wheat germ. That's our vitamin E, our B vitamins, and our protein, other minerals in here. They get rid of that. And then all they leave us with is the center portion, which is called the endosperm or starch. That's your white flour, your bagels, your donuts, and things like that. It's basically valueless. There's nothing in it. So it doesn't do anything for us. Okay? As a matter of fact, hopefully when we cover sugar in a little bit, you'll see it actually steals nutrients from our body. So 62% of our diet are these processed foods that not only give us nutrients, they're stealing nutrients from us. Okay? Then here's the one that a lot of people are surprised at. 25.5% of our diet is animal products. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's chicken or fish or veal or pork or pig or dairy products, animal products. One of the challenges with animal products, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, is contamination. The animal products that you're eating today are not the same animal products that your grandparents ate or your great-grandparents ate. Today we have factory farming, so we're dealing with mass amounts, hundreds of thousands of animals we're trying to process at a time. And when you take 200,000 chickens and you put them in a chicken coop, which is really housing, if one was to get a disease, in 24 hours, they all have it. So we are lacing them up with different types of drugs. So this is a concern here. Okay? Then we have, and this is interesting, 10% of our diet is plant matter. 10%. Now, if that sounds horrific enough, that's nothing. Because the government considers potatoes a vegetable, and they consider french fries a vegetable, and they consider ketchup a vegetable. So this number is not even accurate. Okay? It could be maybe about 6%. Then in here we have 2.5% of our diet is whole grains. 2.5% of our diet is whole grains? Whole grains is basically, it's, it's, it's our life. That's the vitamin E, the protein, the minerals, the fiber, everything we need. And only 2.5% of that is in our diet. That's a problem. So one of the things that I'm seeing in my office is I see kids come in my office that are 12 years old, 270 pounds. Little tiny kids on cholesterol lowering medication. Little kids that already have heart disease. Matter of fact, they've done autopsies of children who have died in automobile accidents. The age of three, plaque in their arteries already. Should have taken 30 or 40 years for that. So let's just go over this really quick because we have so much, so much to cover. 
The standard American diet, which is SAD for short, I hope you can understand that, is a diet that right now is about 150 pounds per person of sugar in our diet. 150 pounds, that's more than I weigh, we're eating on an average per year, okay? Now, when many of your grandparents and great-grandparents uh, were, their diet was maybe 10 to 20 pounds of sugar, okay? One of the problems with this high sugar diet, and there's many, but in terms of what we're trying to address here, is the destruction of the loss of B vitamins. B vitamins are critical in the metabolism of sugar. So when you eat sugar, you need B vitamins to metabolize it and turn it into energy. You don't want to lose B vitamins because B vitamins are critical for your neurological functioning. So when we have a diet that's laced up with sugar, and then our diet's already only 2.5% whole grains, which are B vitamins, we're not getting any B vitamins, and the little bit that we do get that's fortified in our diet is being reduced with this high sugar diet. When you eat a plant-based diet, okay, how many people got the China study today? Make sure you read that, because that's all about the powers of a plant-based diet. When you eat a plant-based diet, the carbohydrates, the sugars we're taking in, are whole grains and beans. If you could imagine having for breakfast a donut, that's like taking a piece of paper, putting it on a flame, a fire, and poof, the energy's gone. You get a high and you get a low. Well, when you want energy to last, we eat a complex carbohydrate. That's like a log on a fire. So that's your whole grains and your beans, things like that that come from nature. That gives us sustained energy. Does that make sense? So you don't have a high and low. What happens with this diet, you see all hyperactivity and tension deficit, it's impossible not to have that if you have a sugar diet because you become bipolar, not clinically, but you have a high, 20 minutes later you have a low, and when you have a low, what's the first thing you want? You want more sugar. So it goes like this, it's called rebound hypoglycemia. And it's, it just goes like that all day long. And you have mood swings, you have the de de destruction of the B vitamins and chromium and magnesium, all things that regulate our moods. So is it any wonder in my office that I have kids coming in that can't focus at all? They're on all sorts of medications to calm them down. We've never seen that before in history. So one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure our diet becomes lower in sugars, but particularly processed sugar. For breakfast, the worst thing that we could have is any basic cereal that's out there at a store because it's all refined grains and they've added sugar. One of the best things that we could have would be a smoothie, okay? Now smoothies could be high in sugar, they could be low, but we're gonna show you how to make a quick smoothie today that we're gonna add some ingredients in that slow the absorption of sugar. Has anyone heard of the glycemic index? The way sugar responds in our system? It's not all that good for us to really follow the glycemic index because any time that you take a food and you add it to sugar, it already changes the glycemic index. So we don't really refer to that very much. But Marina is gonna go ahead and show us a little bit of a, a really quick smoothie. And this is the way we're going to jam as many nutrients as we can in the, in, for breakfast, okay? Because remember, we've been sleeping for seven or eight hours. We have low blood sugar already. There's metabolic processes that take place when you're sleeping, cleansing and detoxifying. You need antioxidants in there, beta carotene, selenium, vitamin E, to basically protect you and heal you. So that's what we're going to do now. So take it okay. away, Marina. Can I take a quick poll? How many eat breakfast every morning? Every morning. Pretty good, pretty good, we're doing well. The majority of people are not eating breakfast these days. They just simply are not. Um, there's many excuses, they're too busy, uh, they don't have time, they're not hungry. Uh, typically most people don't have an appetite in the morning, so they're just kind of bypassing that, maybe a couple of gulps of you know, coffee or something like that. They're out the door and then we'll think about lunch later. So what I wanted to uh, show you is how to make a quick smoothie in the morning that you can actually nourish your cells with, with a lot of antioxidants. It's gonna help fuel you, uh, at least until lunchtime. So one of the foods that we don't, don't typically put in smoothies is something called uh, pumpkin. Uh, the season's coming up. We have pumpkin maybe like once a year, I think, and that's about the only time we get to eat it. But actually, pumpkin is one of the, one of the most nutritious foods that you can be eating. And just opening a can of pumpkin, putting it in a glass container, sealing it and, see, and uh, keeping it in the fridge, it will probably last about a week. You can actually use this canned pumpkin in your smoothies and also in soups. So pumpkin, one of the best things you can um, have in your diet, it's high in uh, carotenoids and fiber. So you're gonna give that into your smoothie. Blueberries, very low glycemic uh, fruit, and it's gonna sweeten things up. A lot of antioxidants also gonna be going into your smoothie. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is, uh, the, the danger in the cans is actually the BPA. 
with the lining of the can. If you know that's the main concern, but you could put other carotenoids in there if you want it. Yeah, this absolutely. This one's right. just pumpkin. It's though. strictly pumpkin. This is just organic pumpkin, nothing else whatsoever. But and that's by the a good way, point. The, the pumpkin, you know, there's over 600 different carotenoids in nature, and pumpkin is one of our best sources of carotenoids. And there's different carotenoids. You know, if somebody has macular degeneration, we use lycopene, right? Or lutein, we could use that. Um, prostate problems, we, we, we could use lycopene. But if somebody has issues with their nervous system and their brain function, we want alpha carotene and beta carotene, which is critical here. The blueberries, very important, those anthocyanins, that pigment in there, these can enhance neuronal communication and repair damage that's occurred in the brain or the nervous system. That's important for us to know. They're one of the highest sources of antioxidants, and they were actually used by British pilots. They usually used to eat bilberry, which is a cousin, and it enhanced um, visual purple so they could see better at night. So these two ingredients are powerhouses. Okay. Now to that, I'm going to add some type of nut milk. And there's so many available. We've got everything from almond milk to rice milk to uh, pamp milk now. We've got soy milk. We've got coconut milk. So you really have a really wide uh, choice of uh, nut milks. And many of them get fortified um, generally, so you also have additional um, nutrients there. One of my favorite things to put in the smoothie that we typically don't think about is a ground cinnamon, okay? So cinnamon in your smoothie is going to basically, it's going to help level out your blood sugar throughout the morning. So one of the best things you can use in smoothies is cinnamon, particularly if you're um, eating fruits. So, yes. There's three different kinds, but any any type of cinnamon will actually do. There's three different types. Um, two are more expensive than others, but generally speaking, the ones you find in the store are of the lighter cinnamon variety, which is the casea, which is what this is, and any ones will do. They're, they're pretty standard in lowering the blood sugar, so not too much difference, but that's a good point on the cinnamon. But cinnamon kind of sort very good. So um, to that, uh, I'm sure everyone has heard of flaxseed, one of the best uh, things you can put in your smoothie for omega, uh, uh, omega fatty, uh, fatty acids, essential fatty acids. And we're gonna put some of that into our smoothie. Now the trick, you might look at that and you think, oh, is that gonna taste really good? So here's where the trick comes in, and it's these dates. We always, uh, of course, take out the pits. We don't want any pits in our smoothies because we wanna keep our teeth, hopefully, and of course we don't want any choking hazard as well. So we just put about, it's about three, three to four dates is, is good enough. And that's going to give a good amount of potassium. Dates have a good amount of iron as well. And when we blend that up, what we've got there is we've got good fiber, we've got some essential fats, good carbohydrates. I'm gonna go ahead, it's gonna make a noise. Just like that, you've got a smoothie, which you can even store in a stainless steel container and take with you to lunch um, or just eat it now. What I recommend on these smoothies is always making them very, very thick. You don't want to gulp down your smoothie because you want to actually get your saliva involved in digesting these smoothies. So you want them very thick. And what I ideally um, recommend is actually eating them with a spoon like this. So make them really thick and eat them just like you would porridge or a, like a real thick type of creamy maybe broth. So eat them with a spoon, you'll get the good digestion. You've got something really fast, easy in the morning. You just doused yourself with a lot of nutrients and you're basically ready to go for the day, okay? Sure, absolutely. Protein powder is great. Um, I'm a big fan of Vega protein this and one, yeah. also the um, Health Force protein. Um, you do, uh, yeah, for most of my clients, I'll have them add a protein. Some they'll use a food. They may use a soy, they may use a tofu but a lot of them I use like a, a non-dairy, so I don't want them to use any sort of whey or milk protein. I'd like them to either use hemp, brown rice, or pea protein. The Vega's another good one we use. Also, warrior food is another good one, but a plant-based source of protein. Now, the other thing that's important is you can make your smoothie. We gave you the recipes. They're in your book. We put, I think, two of them in there. Yes. And then we have DVDs, and my website has a lot of different free stuff you can get. 
But you can change these if you want. You know, if you don't want it, if you don't, if you have diabetes or you have a blood sugar issue, you don't have to put the dates in. But what I would recommend is that you do not, under any circumstance at all, use artificial sweeteners. This is the biggest challenge that I think should be talked about here from a nutritional standpoint. I wish we had the time to go into everything, but let me just say this. You know one of our main um, ones, I'm not gonna, I'll just say it starts with Nutra. You kind of know that one? Okay, I want you to understand that 50% of this is something called phenylalanine, and 40% is something called aspartic acid, and here's the scary stuff, this is all I care that you remember. 10% of this is something called methyl esters. Now, methyl ester inside the body gets converted to methyl, methanol, okay? Now, methanol, just so you know, gets broken down in the body. This methanol gets broken it down into something called formic acid and formaldehyde. Now, formic acid is when an ant stings you, that's the poison that goes in you. Formaldehyde is one of the deadliest neurotoxins, keyword neurotoxins out. Very, very difficult to get out of the, the system, this, this product here. Here's the scary thing. One of the biggest problems associated with methanol ingestion optic neuritis, swelling of the optic nerve. This is a deadly poison you should not be using under any circumstance. And you may want to make this worse, go ahead and heat it up. Go ahead what they did when they, when they donated lots of, of, of this product to the soldiers and it sat around in the heat and all of a sudden it forms different compounds and then these soldiers were coming back with neurological problems. They weren't sure, they weren't drawing a direct link to this you know, billion dollar product, but um, pretty interesting. The alcohol sugars? Um, yeah, basically, I mean, I think those sugars, the sugar that we recommend is generally going to be, would you want to talk about it briefly? What's that? Well, stevia is the one that we recommend, but not the, not, there's different ones that are artificial. We recommend the ones that's directly from the Peruvian herb, stevia, not the ones, what's the company that's creating uh, there's it now? There's two companies that are making um, versions of stevia, and one is Pepsi and one is Coke, so... I would go with the organic stevia that you get, you know, maybe at a But what we store. use as a sweetener, real quick, go ahead, real quick. I just quick. wanted to share with you real quick, you know, a lot of times when people cut sugar out of their diet, it's such a drastic change for the taste buds that automatically when we eat something that's not sweet, we're kind of just kind of turned <coughs> off by it and we just don't want to eat that and it gets further and further on the back of the shelf. So one of the things we can use to sweeten things up like maybe our um, oatmeal or things like that is by soaking dried fruit. Here we've got some prunes. You can also use raisins and dates. And you basically just put them in a little bit of water like this and let them soak overnight. So all of those natural sugars are gonna go into the water. It's gonna become pretty thick and you can use that kind of as a syrup right on your oatmeal. So you're gonna get nutrients um, with that sweetness because of the iron and other nutrients that are uh, leaching into the water but at least it's not going to give you that processed white sugar that's so draining. Yes? Uh, well, food combined would be too much to get into at this conference, but, um, you know, basically if you combine a starch, if you combine, let's say, bread, or say something like yogurt, you take a milk and you combine it with sugar on the bottom, it's gas. So, yeah, it causes gas, but, you know, I mean, that's kind of a technicality. I mean, we do, we do utilize some food combining with certain people who have digestive issues, but for here, we're trying to mainly just talk about the basics. But that is a good question. Um, so what I do basically is for my clients is I'll have them soak any fruit that's dried, but preferably something that's super high in nutrients like prunes. And basically that sugar gets leached into the water. If you don't use too much water, it turns into a thick syrup like a molasses. Then you can sweeten coffee or tea. What I do is I actually, for my athletes, I have them soak dried fruit, say a mixed tropical fruit like this, and then I have them take their water bottle and they fill it up about 80% with water and then 20% with that liquid there. And that's a natural sports beverage right there. And they drink that. But you just, all I could say is this is something that you, under no circumstance, under no circumstance at all, especially here, dealing with the issues that you're dealing with, should you have anything that has to do with methanol. I mean, do you realize that methanol toxicity mimics MS? It's what it mimics. Yeah, there's been people who have downed tons and tons and tons in soda pop, and they just couldn't figure out what these neurological symptoms were, and they linked it to that. 
So we want to stay away from these artificial sweeteners. Plus, artificial sweeteners actually encourage people to crave sugar more. Okay? There's nothing wrong with pure sugar from fruit. So if you want to have regular fruit, you know, apples, bananas, oranges, whatever, that's fine. But you want to stay away from these refined products. Remember, when you're eating foods that have sugar here, there's naturally B vitamins in here. But when we take these um, pure sugar, then, you know, just like cane sugar or high fructose corn syrup, we're using B vitamins to metabolize that. So we need to be careful. Does that make sense, though, about this? Because this is, I really want you guys to understand that. Let's go back to this really quickly. So we want to have a low sugar diet, but a standard American diet is too high in sugar. It's robbing us of vitamins. It causes bipolar. It causes all the problems with kids. Don't fool yourself. I've had kids come in the office that had, uh, they've been to nine psychiatrists, six psychologists, every medication under the sun. Then they gave them experimental meds. Nothing worked. Then they came to me. I changed their diet. No artificial color sugars. Made them a pure plant-based diet. No rock music, no video games, and boom, they pop back to normal. That was it. People were running up to their parents, their, their parents saying, how'd you do it? It was dietary-induced hyperactivity, okay? Now, really quickly, this is, this is key here, fats. This is so important for you guys to understand because what we're dealing with here is an issue that has to do with fatty acids. You need to have good, healthy fats for the sheathing of your nerve. What's that called? The myelin sheath, right? So we know this myelin sheath, basically, if you have a nerve, and that myelin sheath is basically covering it, right? And that's how these electrical impulses get sent. But here's the key thing. This trans fatty acids, hydrogen, partially hydrogenation, have you heard of that? Shortening, margarine, nothing could be worse. This is where we run into problems because here's, here's the big problem here. Your cells, the architectural structure here of your cell wall is basically a phospholipid, it's a fat. So when your construction team inside your body goes to build your cells, it's looking for healthy fats. It wants the avocado. It wants some nuts. It wants to build this healthy fat membrane. This membrane is like a bodyguard. It tells the bad guys, you don't come in, but good guys, construction team, we need you to come in. If your body doesn't find these essential fatty acids from flaxseed and walnuts, then it starts making this housing, this membrane. Like, for instance, let's say you have trans fatty acids in. Shortening, hydrogenation, right? Do you realize the food manufacturers created this, this hydrogenation here? because it lasts longer on the shelf, so fats would, would, don't go rancid. It increases the, perm the way it spreads and makes it creamy, and it makes it tasty, right? But nature really doesn't make trans fatty acids. It's predominantly a man-made fat. There's a tiny bit of nature and dairy and a few things. It's predominantly um, man-made. Now, when you have these trans fatty acids, they raise your cholesterol, they, they raise the low-density lipoproteins, the bad cholesterol, they lower the high-density lipoproteins, but here's the big one. If your body's not getting the healthy flax, it's going to say, hey, look, I need to build a cell membrane, so why didn't I build it out of these trans fatty acids? So now you have an unhealthy trans fatty acid, you have an unhealthy cell membrane, and they get incorporated into the myelin sheath. No good. You want DHA, you want the flaxseed, the omega-3, the walnuts. These are the type of um, the fats that you want into your diet. This is critical for you here. So no shortening, no, no partially hydrogenated oil at all. Now here's what the government has done, which is scary. They will have on a label, it will say on the label, say for instance, it'll say zero trans fatty acids, okay? The problem is the government, same thing with fat, they'll allow a half a gram. So if it, it say for instance, they say zero fat on here, they could put in there legally 0.4% of a gram of trans fatty acids. And then they can call it fat free. The problem is, if it's something like a chip or something, you might eat eight servings of that. You might eat eight servings of that, and before you know it, you've got four, five, six grams of trans fatty acids when they just told you they were zero. Have you ever seen these sprays like, well, I won't mention the names, but these spray oils, right? And they say zero fat. Has you ever, have you ever read the ingredients? What are, what's the ingredient? Fat, pure olive oil. How can you spray a pot with a pure olive oil and they say it's zero fat? Because they're going by if it's a half a gram or less. So it's 0.4 grams and they don't tell you they have to spray 1 16th of a second to get that. Most people just go like this. Does that make sense? Okay. Is this making sense or not? Yes. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to put the good healthy fats in. So flaxseed is critical for you. 
Um, the, flax, the flax is good. The walnuts are good. Green leafy vegetables are one of our best sources, too. Hemp is pretty good. You want to basically always eat your salads with some sort of fat because in the salads are these carotenoids, and they get absorbed better with fats. So you could sprinkle some flaxseed. You could put some nuts on there. You could use an avocado. I wouldn't use too much direct oil if you can avoid it. You know, the oil, the fat you eat, the fat you wear. Olive oil doesn't have any nutrients in it, but olives do. Olives would be fine to put in your salad. But it's just kind of like sugar. When they take sugar from sugar cane, if you were to eat the sugar cane, there's lots of fiber and minerals in there. But when they process it, all it is is sugar. So it's the same thing with fats. We want to avoid oils and try to eat our fats as a food. Does that make sense? John, let me show them how to make that dressing to yeah. avoid that Oh, yeah, this uh, is a great oil. dressing. I love this so, one. So um, I wanted to, uh, since we're on that topic of oils, typically what I see in a salad is I see someone put some iceberg lettuce, maybe a little bit of that, maybe a little bit of vegetables, and then they'll come in and it's, they'll drown it with the oil, and pretty soon you, you can't find the salad. Where, where did the salad go? It's, it's all drowned in the oil, so they end up taking all of this oil that has no nutritional value. So we're going to actually learn how to make our own salad dressing. We do not have to buy conventional salad dressing anymore. The other thing I recommend too is getting away from iceberg lettuce and going into the kale. The kale is going to get substantially more nutrients for you, vitamin K, and also exploring more with different types of vegetables like red cabbage, for example. Red cabbage always kind of gets put on the back burner, but it's one of the best things we can put in our salads, very high in nutrients. And what we're going to make is our very own dressing. These are so delicious and easy to make. Sometimes when you put all these vegetables into your uh, bowl, it can get a little bit overwhelming. You got to sit there and you got to chew all that, and it's you know it's not that exciting. But when we actually make a dressing and you when we pour it over there, there's less chewing. It's more flavorful. Watch how much vegetables I'm going to put to make this dressing. I'm putting a half of a bell pepper. I'm putting two celery sticks in there. That's already a lot of vegetables just right then and there. Celery, one of the best things you can have for natural electrolytes like sodium and potassium. We've got the uh, red bell pepper, very high in vitamin C. I'm putting a whole avocado there. You want some kind of fat, as John mentioned, in the salad dressing because that actually helps you absorb the nutrients in the green leafy vegetables All the time there. you want the fats, even if you're trying to lose weight. No sense of eating a salad if there's not some sort of fat. So we're going to put an avocado there. Avocado is delicious, enhances the flavor of just about anything. And this recipe's in your book. It's in the sheet there in the book. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I actually spray um, a mineral supplement in there. I use the Fortisalt, um, and you can use that instead of salt. It has uh, a number of minerals. Um, again, season to taste. The secret in the dressing is actually miso. Has anyone tried miso? Miso paste, anyone? Okay, great, one person. That's fantastic. Um, it's actually one of the best things that you can eat. It's a fermented soy product. And you've probably heard, you know, maybe went to a Japanese restaurant, there's miso soup, something like that. But this is actual miso paste that you can buy at the store. And you can use, it's kind of salty, and it's creamy, and it's actually very, very good for you. It's a good source of protein. And when you put that into your, um, salad dressing, it's going to give it a nice creamy um, mixture. And that's it, just simple like that. I'm going to add a little bit of water. You can make it as creamy or as thick as you like. Um, watch what happens when I just put a little bit of water. Again, play around with it. If you like it thick, what can happen is you can use it as a dip. It makes a really, really nice dip. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. <laughs> done is I've actually created a really creamy dressing pretty, pretty quick here. We were going to make some for everybody, but with the hotel, we weren't able to sample food, so. See, it's so it good, the own. blender doesn't even want to let go of it. It's just like, I just, <laughs> I just don't, well, that's okay. So uh, basically, we just take our salad and we can just pour it right on there. I'm just going to use the spoon, so just so you can see 
the creaminess and the consistency, just like that. And it's, it's absolutely delightful. And it stores delicious. a couple days in the refrigerator. Just like that. So it is really good. And you have the recipe, so you'll be able to make it. And no you problem. can be really creative with these. Um, the secret is using high watered vegetables. So if you don't want to use red peppers or they're not available, that's okay. Just substitute a cucumber. Cucumber will do exactly the same thing. The trick is the miso paste, and a little bit of the Forta salt or a little bit of salt, and again, the avocado as well. If you don't want to use avocado, um, you can substitute a little bit of nuts for extra nutrition. So good ones would be the walnuts, cashews would also do uh, a fine job as well if avocados are not available. Yes. Well, the way to look at it is this way. The pesticides are designed, keyword, to shut off the central nervous system of an insect. So we're big insects. You want to, if you can't afford organic produce, then do the best you can. But the food with the highest amount of pesticides in the world, does anyone have any idea? Which one? Strawberries, that's, that's a good one. I mean, in terms of high, strawberries are high, salary is high, lettuce can be. The, the food with the highest amount of pesticides in the world is animal products. You're taking 20, you know, you're taking a whole, it, for cows it's basically about 10 to 15 pounds of heavily sprayed grains and they give it to a cow to produce one pound of beef. Now they use methyl mercury on these grains to preserve them. Now as you know mercury is a neurotoxin. So the less of those products that we have, they concentrate it in their system. It's like fish. You have a small fish that gets mercury in him and a bigger fish eats him and a bigger fish eats him. It's called biological magnification. Now when we eat plant matter, since, since animal products has no fiber, it, it's just stuck. But if we eat plant matter, even if it had a pesticide in it, it chelates to it, grabs onto it, and escorts it out the bowels quicker than if it was sucked into an animal's fat. So I prefer organic if you can get it, definitely, especially fighting, keeping the nervous system healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, and also the other thing is the foods that you want organic for sure would be berries. If you can afford berries and you can buy them frozen, the berries that we use in our recipes are frozen. So you can get them at Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, wherever. They're fine that way because they flash freeze them right away. Okay? Just be careful with you know, non organic berries. That's a big one. Salary and things like that. Yes? No, well, they have to. They go through strict certification process. I wouldn't worry so much about organic and non-organic if you're not eating a lot of vegetables. Right now, just get more plant matter in your diet, and then you could start looking for organic. But it's more important that we load up the body with plant matter. Now we only got a few minutes, so we got to roll. I want to talk quickly about protein. Protein is really important to build and repair muscle tissue. It forms hormones, forms enzymes. It's very important for us. The problem with protein today, as I alluded to earlier, is that it's like a sponge. And we're living in this toxic cesspool today with all these chemical contaminants that get stored in the fatty tissue of these animals, and then you eat them. And again, they harm the nervous system. So we need to be careful. When we switch to more of a plant-based diet, we get our proteins from plants, okay? So beans, peas, and lentils are our highest sources. Nuts and seeds are good, but spinach and, and kale and broccoli, those are high sources also. So we want to try to get our protein from, from this. Now here's the other thing. When you eat an animal product, the only thing you're getting is protein. You're getting fat and cholesterol, which we don't want. But you're not getting any antioxidants. And the antioxidants are what you need to have to protect your, your tissue. You, may, you might not be able to see it really clear from here, but I cut an, an apple piece really quickly. And this one I squeezed some lemon juice on, and this one I didn't. And it, you can't see it from back there, but it's starting to turn brown now. It's starting to get brown. This one isn't because I squeezed lemon juice on here. That's the whole idea here of antioxidants. These antioxidants, the vitamin C, the selenium, the vitamin E, the carotenoids, once you spread those on a food, it protects it. It preserves it's the same thing within our body. It preserves and protects our tissue. Now, we only have a short amount left. Let me just mention fiber. All fiber is found in the earth. So anything that grows from the ground or from a tree is fiber. Animal products have no fiber. Okay. Now, quickly, because they've only given us about a minute. One thing about motion. 
you're sitting in a chair or if you're in a wheelchair, you're sitting a lot during the day, you've got most of your lymph nodes in your breast area and your groin. If you're in this compromised position all day, your immune system is suffering. You have to do your best to move your arms and try to get your legs up and stimulate that lymphatic flow. Bending, pushing, twisting, pulling, moving is what stimulates lymph system. Okay? Deep diaphragmic breathing and massage stimulates the lymph system. What doesn't help the lymph system is lying in a bed or sitting in a chair. So ask yourself how much are you doing that in the course of the day. And then finally remember this, the most important antidote to life's poisons today. We have all this hatred and anger and jealousy and all this rage. The antidote is love and compassion. So make sure that you're loving to yourself. Be kind to yourself with your words. Be kind to other people. When you get upset, don't take it out on other people. Send them love. Project them love. Give yourself love every day. Be kind and compassionate with all that you do. On my website, which is johnpierre.com, my motto is think good thoughts and do good deeds. So please keep that in mind. And then also, please check out our website for free information. We do have some DVDs here if people want to get any cooking ones. But I know that we're on time. we got to go. Thank you for coming. Thank you. you want to get that, please? Actually, we're too.